Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. I back. Good to be back. Good to be back. I do want to switch gears. Uh, and talk a little bit of College Hoops transfer portal. Because while Monday was about reacting to the bracket, we did our full Aaron Torres pod show earlier in the day. Monday is also the day that the College Hoops transfer portal opens. That is right. Um, you know, it's crazy. We can agree or disagree if it's the right thing. But the one thing about this channel, we have really been all over the portal coverage over the last couple couple years, really. And it's funny because even when the bracket came out on Sunday, I had people in my matches like, Torres, are you going to talk any portal on Monday? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. We are going to dive into the big names. There's probably about eight or ten names that I think are at least worth mentioning. Uh, two former McDonald's All-Americans are in the portal. Also, a couple players that because their coaches were fired last week were able to previously enter the portal. And so I want to hit on all those big names right now. Now, before we get started, quick reminder, uh, the Aaron Torres Pod Bracket Challenge open for business. Just click the little link in the bio, the show description below. Uh, free to enter, $1,000 in cash prizes. We appreciate Bracket Fanatics. We appreciate everything they do. They are an incredible partner. Again, click that link. Do your boy Torres a favor. Free to enter that Bracket Challenge. With that said, let's get right into the portal. No time to waste. So many big names. And the place I want to start. Beautiful, Stillwater, Oklahoma. So Oklahoma State fires Mike Boynton last week. Uh, we can agree or disagree if it was the right move, but it was the decision that was made, and now a couple of their star players are on the move. The first one, I mentioned there are two McDonald's All-Americans moving. The first is a kid named Brandon Garrison, six foot ten, former McDonald's All-American out of the state of Oklahoma. This past year at Oklahoma State averaged about seven and a half points, five and a half rebounds, one and a half blocks per game, which sounds good, but not great. But you got to factor out a few things. One, he's playing in the Big 12. He's playing against grown men, 23, 24, 25 years old in the toughest conference of college basketball. Two, he only played about 22 minutes a game. So I'm not great at math, but you extrapolate out seven and a half, five and one and a half over a 40 minute game when you're playing about 22 minutes a game. That's what, about 14 points, nine boards, three blocks per game? Yeah, go ahead and sign me up for that. So he, to me, was the highest profile player that entered. This was a kid that had offers from Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and many others coming out of high school. Now, what's interesting, though, this is a kid that entered the portal and put in the caveat of do not contact. What does that mean? We've talked about it, but let me refresh you. Players, when they enter the portal, you can be a standard player who enters the portal. You can be a guy that, that you put in your name, your contact information, whatever. But there are players that also have, there, there is an option that says do not contact, which basically means do not contact me. You know, it's the cliche, like I'll be in touch if I want to be in touch with you. But in general, what that means, if you have the do not contact up, it means you have a pretty good idea of where you want to go. This is a kid that would literally probably get hit up by hundreds of schools if he did not put that in. And my guess is he probably has a pretty good idea of where he wants to go. My assumption would be, and, and you know, I was busy doing bracket stuff. I haven't worked the phones too hard just yet. I would assume it's a school that he has a previous relationship with. Again, originally chose Oklahoma State over Kansas, Arkansas, et cetera. So that is a name worth monitoring. Let's keep it going. Stay at Oklahoma State for a minute because while Brandon Garrison, the most high-profile player, their leading scorer, Javon Small, actually entered the portal as well. Six-foot-three guard, spent the last two years uh, at East Carolina prior to coming to Oklahoma State this year. But it tells you how talented he is that this kid can step onto a Big 12 campus and immediately lead this team in scoring about 15 points per game. Not a great shooter, not huge size. He's about 6'3". He's that guy that gets to the rim and finishes at the rim and gets the foul line, but he was very effective doing it in league play. 21 points against Oklahoma earlier this year, 24 out of conference against Creighton. 
And like I said, a scoring guard, a lead guard, 15 points per game after two years at East Carolina. I would expect him to get plenty of interest across all of college basketball. When you can average 15 a game in the Big 12, you can average 15 a game anywhere. And so this is a kid that I would expect to see bounce around, have some interest. And, you know, I think he could end up anywhere because I think there's going to be a lot of interest. As best I can tell, there's no reason to believe that there are limitations on the contact. Let's leave Oklahoma State. Let's go. I mentioned off the top, there are two former McDonald's All-Americans in the portal. One is Brandon Garrison. We just talked about him. The other is Andrej Stojakovic, excuse me, Andrej Stojakovic, forgive me, a little new one, but uh, six foot eight, six foot nine wing, uh, originally, surprise, surprise, from the Sacramento area, and that is, of course, because he is the son of the legend, Peja Stojakovic. This is a kid, listen, I, I had a chance to see him about two summers ago at the Pangos All-American Camp, saw him around LA, uh, just an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly talented player not surprising if you watched his pops play but he has made a name for himself i'm not going to keep mentioning his dad because he deserves his own spotlight was a kid that as a freshman at stanford nine points per game three and a half rebounds per game about 33 percent three point shooting but that was a disappointing stanford team up and down and i get it right like just one of those deals where freshmen Tough academic school. It usually, for whatever reason, takes freshmen at Stanford a little longer to get going. And I think part of it is the academic requirement that comes with being a player there. But this kid, I'm telling you, he could play anywhere. Had offers from UConn out of high school, Kentucky out of high school, UCLA out of high school. But I love his game. He's a playmaker. He's a guy that can that that shoots, that scores, that sets up others. He can kind of make that little catch in the high post and kick it out, do whatever. But he's a player that I believe will be contacted by just about everybody. Originally committed to Stanford over UCLA. I would assume that UCLA is the favorite for him. Um, you know, one, he's a West Coast kid. I think he, he is very close to his family. The other thing I remember from his recruitment, the family does take academics very seriously. And so on the one hand, if you're going to leave Stanford, UCLA is a pretty good place to end up. But two, UCLA, because of their own academic requirements, is kind of limited in all of the transfers that they can take. Bring it up because he's the kind of kid that UCLA, I don't think they would have trouble getting a Stanford kid into school, but he is a name to keep an eye out on. And I'll tell you this, I talked to some people over the weekend. I think Stanford, even though they were not a great team in the win-loss column, they're going to have more players enter, a couple names that are very interesting that will create a lot of interest. I don't want to spoil those kids' moments, and you know some may end up coming back, but I got two or three names that I think will have plenty of interest outside of Andrej Stojakovic, uh, and I expect for them to be very pursued as well. Let's quickly get to some other names from Monday. Uh, one, Caleb Glenn played at Louisville this past season. Very interesting player. Six foot six wing. Um, I get it. Uh, you know, you sit there and you wonder, okay, how good could this kid have been? Well, first of all, he was a top 100 prospect committed to Louisville very early in the process. Um, you know, you know, he actually committed to Chris Mack, believe it or not, stayed with Louisville. Um, you know, when Kenny Payne took over, uh, his senior year of high school was Kenny Payne's first year of high school or, or first year at Louisville. And then this past year, Caleb Glenn enrolled and played at Louisville was a guy that started a bunch of games, played in virtually every game, averaged just about four points per game, but he got some starts late in the year, and you can't say he wasn't impactful. 17 points versus Pitt, 15 versus Georgia Tech, 15 just a week ago against Syracuse in what was the third to last regular season game. And so when I look at him, 6'6", super athletic, he just strikes me as the kind of guy, listen, he's a two- or three-year developmental guy. That's okay. Not everybody is a one-and-done superstar. That's fine. Guess what? He is going to be an impact guy at some point in college. Caleb Glenn, six foot six. He's originally from Louisville. Don't know if he wants to stay in the area, but he is a guy that I suspect there will be a great deal of interest from. Another kind of former highly touted prospect, also from the ACC. Definitely a little bit of a different story. We got to talk at least a little bit about Benny Williams. Benny Williams, of course, uh, played three seasons at Syracuse, was a former top 50 prospect, six foot nine. He's from uh, the Maryland area. Um, 
And he is a player that unfortunately uh, he had a pretty good sophomore year in 2023 last year, Jim Beheim's final season, about eight points per game, three boards per game, but it wasn't working out with Adrian Autry this year. He actually got thrown off the team. We find out uh, uh, today that he is in fact in the, in the transfer portal, bring it up because I do think, listen, at the end of the day, he is a kid that is going to receive a great deal of interest um, from the, uh, you know, from the transfer portal, um, and is a kid that, that, you know, listen, I, I don't know what's going to, what happened. I have some ideas. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to put personal stuff out there. That's not my place. What I will say, you get kicked out of a program. It's up to the school to vet you. But if you're six foot nine, you're a former top 50 prospect. You've played in the ACC. You're going to see significant interest. Benny Williams, a name to know. Also Doug McDaniel. Another name to know, very interesting uh, background there. So Doug McDaniel was the kid. He played at Michigan this past season, okay? And if you remember about the midway point of the season, Juwan Howard announces, this was wild. Juwan Howard announces that his best player, Doug McDaniel, will no longer travel for road games. And so that was like a very weird thing. Uh, I had never heard of it. Now, we find out later that it's academically related. The school was basically like, look, we're not sending you on the road. Stay back. Work on your schoolwork. But I bring it up because Doug McDaniel is a really good college basketball player. 16 points per game, five assists per game, um, you know, 5'11". He's not a big guard, but man, can this kid make plays. Like I said, 16 points per game, four and a half assists per game, uh, you know, 37% shooting from three. I don't know if he's got the size to be like an NBA dude, but you talk about an all-conference type player at the college level. Ah, uh, yeah, that's who Doug McDaniel is. Will be really interesting to see. I saw our buddy Trilly Donovan put out a reference to him being from the DMV area. He played at the John Paul uh, High School, John Paul IV High School. That has historically been like a Duke hotbed. Um uh, you know, that was where, um, that was where, uh, Jeremy Roach went. That was where, um, what's, what was the other kid's name? Uh, Trevor Keels went as well. Obviously if Trilly Donovan is referencing being from the DMV, I don't think this kid's going to Duke, but, um, St. Paul, the fourth Catholic, I apologize. I think I said John Paul Catholic, St. Paul, the fourth Catholic. Um, but bring it up because it sounds like if you follow Trilly, uh, maybe a Maryland type situation, maybe a Virginia Tech type situation. Um, but wouldn't it surprise me for him to go back to the DMV? But this kid can play. Like this kid, I'll put out my rankings maybe after another day or two when more players enter the portal. But this kid is really freaking good. Uh, and so I'll be curious to see where he ends up. Doug McDaniel is probably, in my opinion, like you just talk players that can impact college basketball next season at any level. He's probably the best one to enter so far. Couple guys I want to get to really quick that already are in the portal because their coaches got fired and were able to enter as soon as they 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 uh they were fired. Pepper Nine has some dude now. Pepper Nine remember was coached by Lorenzo Romar and listen coach Romar is a beloved guy and the one thing you could say about him going back to the Washington days. This was a guy that always had an eye for talent. How does he end up with Markel Fultz? It's because he liked Markel Fultz before Markel Fultz was the number one player in America. He offered him when he was like a fringe top 100 kid ends up, uh, you know, riding with them when Markel Fultz ends up to the, as the number one player in America, on and on, I could go on forever. Bring it up because he's got some dudes that are now available. The first one that is especially interesting to me, Javon Porter, six foot 11 center, is the younger brother of Michael Porter Jr. And also uh, Jonte Porter, who of course is in the NBA as well. This kid, six foot 11, 16 points per game. Six boards. So he's not like a huge back to the basket guy. This kid is versatile. This kid is athletic. Listen, I'm not saying he has Michael's skill set, but you know the athleticism that that family has. And what's interesting about him is that he actually shot the ball pretty well two seasons ago, more so than this past year. As a uh, as a uh, sophomore last year, so actually I take that back. He was a sophomore this past season, but as a freshman last year, shot 35% from three just 30% this year. But man, you talk about a kid, as I said, six foot 11, athletic as hell, can jump out of the gym. This dude looks like an NBA player to me. Now, you you know, a little rough around the edges. You average 17 a game, you know, 33% three-point shooting, whatever it was his freshman year, 35%. This dude can ball. 
will be interesting as of now. Have not seen any real schools have, that, that have been put out. It, you know, listen, Missouri fans, I get it, are very intrigued by the possibility of bringing him in. That's where Michael played. That's where Jonte Porter played. But obviously their dad was also an assistant coach there at the time. I would expect this kid's recruitment to be wide open. I think when you're talking, you know, Doug McDaniel's right there. Stoyakovich is right there. Brandon Garrison is right there. I would put Javon Porter right there as well. That dude can play. Speaking of dudes for Pepperdine that can play, Michael Ajayi was actually the leading scorer Pepperdine this last year. 17 points, nine boards per game as a 6'7 guard, okay? Now, he's a very interesting story. From the Seattle area, obviously Lorenzo Romar has ties there, only played one year of high school basketball, goes to JUCO. This was his first year in major college basketball, averages 17 points and nine boards per game. And because he was able to enter the portal after Lorenzo Romar's firing, he is a guy that has already heard from some of the biggest names in college basketball. He has heard from Indiana. He has heard from Kansas. He has heard from Arizona. He's heard from Arkansas, Gonzaga, UCLA, USC. Whew. That is a list and a half right there. That is a kid that, in my opinion, listen, I, I, I think that list speaks for itself. And if you're asking me, I think that's the kind of kid that can play anywhere in college basketball, rough around the edges, but that's okay. Um, I really just think that um, that's a kid that, to me, uh, is very, very, very interesting, and I think he can play anywhere. Last name, because I know this has gone long. This is only the first of what will be dozens of portal updates. Jacob Cruz is a name that you need to know. Six foot eight guard from UT Martin, another player that that entered the portal last week, or at least made it clear that his plans were to enter the portal. This dude's a hooper. Listen, I, I don't. This is unfair of me to do. I'm just gonna say it anyway. The game reminds me of Dalton Connect. Now listen, there's only one Dalton Connect, and Dalton Connect is credit. Not only was a great mid major player, but by all accounts is an insane worker who made sure that if he came to Tennessee, he was gonna take advantage of the opportunity. Don't know enough about Jacob Cruz to know if he has that in him, but you watch the film, that looks like a dude that can have a Dalton Connect type impact. Not saying first team All-American, not saying dropping 40 against Kentucky and Auburn, Auburn and whoever. But I'm talking about can he step in and be the best player, the leading scorer on an SEC team, a, 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 a power conference team? I think he can be. Six foot eight, 19 points per game, eight and a half boards, 40% from the three-point line. And I'm telling you this, you look at some of, one, his early games, but two, also the schools that have already reached out. Look at 20 points versus NC State, 35 in a game versus Little Rock, and then the schools that have reached out. Kansas has reached out. This is per uh, Joe Tipton again. Kansas has reached out. UCLA has reached out. Gonzaga has reached out. Auburn has reached out. Missouri has reached out. North Carolina State, LSU, Illinois. More recently, uh, how about Xavier? How about DePaul with their new head coach? Chris Holtman, Maryland, this kid has received quite a bit of interest. So I'll tell you what, I think for the first portal update, that feels like it's it's good enough, right? I mean, we got, what, two more months of this stuff? I mean, think about it. The portal is open for another 30 days. And then on top of that, remember, there are going to be kids that enter the portal that also test the NBA draft. And in doing so, can stay in the portal as long as they want. They will probably go through the draft process through May. So we're talking probably another 60 to 70 days of portal coverage. Make sure you're locked in here. Make sure to subscribe. Appreciate your support. The first of many, baby. Let's do this. Portal season is here. I love it. And I know you do too. Can't wait to continue this, this portal journey with all of you.